this video, we're heading to Southwest Colorado with the hope for an amazing fall color season highlighted with moody clouds and snow covered peaks. Did I find what I was looking for? Let's get started and find out. Hello everybody and welcome to my newest video. In this one we're heading into the San Juan Mountains of Southwest Colorado last October to photograph the fall colors. Now the flow of this video is going to be a little bit different because unfortunately over the first 24 hours or so of that trip I broke the cardinal rule of the YouTuber and that is always be filming everything. And unfortunately during that time I didn't film anything at all, anywhere, and that's a failure on my part. Now there's a few different reasons why that happened and I'll go through them here a little bit as we go through some of the photography that I shot during that time. Starting out with the sunset below Mount Sneffels that I photographed on the first night I was there. Now, I will say on this one that I did get into the location later than I would have liked so that was contributing to me kind of rushing through what I was doing that night. Secondly, there was a photography workshop already on location when I got there. And that meant there were, let's say about 40 or 50 people set up in various locations from that spot to shoot a very similar composition to what I was going for. And so I didn't want to be that guy being the YouTuber out there with my little camera. Hey, watch what I'm doing. Pay no attention to all the other people here with me trying to just hang out and enjoy the scene. And so I was trying to avoid doing that. And I also ended up setting up my tripod right next to another pretty well-known photographer on YouTube, Mark Denny. And so I spent the time kind of chit-chatting with Mark and some of the other photographers around and just enjoying the moment, trying to capture what I could as most of the sunlight was being blocked out by the clouds. But here and there, some little bits of light would shine through and light up different spots of the scene and we would quickly try and capture those moments as they appeared. And as it, as it turned out, that would be a little preview of what most of the weekend would be like with a lot of clouds and moody scenes and sunlight peeking through here and there to light up little spots of whatever you were looking at and trying to make that work and focus on the moment. Now this is the photograph I captured that evening of Mount Sneffels with some fall color. Thank <laughs> As you can see here, there's just a little bit of sunlight breaking through, casting some spots of warm red light on the top of Mount Sneffels and the ridgeline running along to the east, I guess, from the mountain. It's still a very beautiful scene, a little softer feel, mostly softer light, except for that little bit of sunlight peeking through. So maybe a little less dramatic than I would have captured if I had gotten there a little bit earlier when there was more full sun on those aspens on the hillside. But I still like this shot a lot and I like the way it turned out and I did enjoy the moment getting to take all that in with some fellow photographers. Moving on from that night into the following morning, I had 
promised to meet up with another photographer friend along with one of the guys that came with me on the trip for sunrise up at Beaver Lake the next morning. But when we got up early to go out and drive up there, it was pouring down rain, all kinds of clouds, and you know I just wasn't sure how well it was gonna work out. But we had promised to meet up up there, so off we went to spend, I think it's around an hour to get from our hotel in Montrose up to Beaver Lake, if I remember right. And when we got up there, it was still drizzling, still very cloudy, no sunrise light to be seen, and it did remain mostly that way throughout the time up there. And I did let the moment get to me a little bit as far as shooting video. I just wasn't sure how good any of the photographs or any of the experience was gonna work out. And so I just kept my little pocket camera in my bag and didn't even film anything with it. Uh, we quickly had to pivot from the idea of getting great sunrise light because it never materialized at all and focus on a little more detailed elements of the scene, something that would show up well in that softer light. But as it turned out, some of those photographs ended up being some of my favorites from the trip. And I'll show you some of those here. This one with this nice grove of aspens across the lake reflecting in the surface of the lake because it was calm, even though it was cloudy and kind of moody. We got some nice reflections on the lake, as you can see here. And there's some fog blowing through the valley behind as well. And you can especially see that in this tighter shot of the same grove with a little bit of the fence line running in front of it. And then there's also this third shot of a different grove in that same area that I shot a lot tighter of. And that softer light really shows the details and the colors of the trees pretty well. And again, there's some more of that fog drifting through in the valley behind. I'm in Montrose, getting ready to head down towards Uray and heading over Ofer Pass this morning to see what we can see. It is raining here in Montrose, but the radar says there is no rain that, down that direction once we get past Ridgeway, so I'm hoping that that holds up true and that the sun may actually peek out here and there through the clouds today. But we'll see what we get. Off we go. Now, driving the million dollar highway between Uray and Silverton can be a spectacular drive any time of year, but especially so in the fall season in late September and early October when the aspens are in full blaze. This trip was especially nice, as you can see from these photos captured on the million dollar highway just south of Uray and in the area around Crystal Lake. We continued on over Red Mountain Pass, almost all the way to Silverton, before turning off on the road to Ophir Pass, a drive I had been looking forward to for a few years. Little did we know what would lie ahead. drive up the east side of the pass from Silverton was beautiful with fall colors and snow covered peaks with moody clouds milling around the summits in every direction. As it turned out, at the top of the pass, things would get much more interesting with snow on the ground and once we crossed to the west side, we would be completely enveloped in clouds. Unfortunately, I did not have my GoPro filming dash cam footage on the way down the west side. That would have been super interesting. But you'll have to settle for the footage we got once we got down to the town of Ophir and out from under the clouds on the west side. Those views were spectacular. Once we arrived in the tiny mountain town of Ophir, there were beautiful views in every direction of high mountain peaks capped with snow 
peeking in and out from the clouds, and here and there the sunlight would break through to turn those groves of aspen a brilliant yellow, covering the hillsides in beauty. It was an amazing experience. Finally continued on, pausing at this peaceful lake with beautiful mountain views to have a picnic supper before returning back to that view of Mount Sneffels hoping to get some better sunset light. But it was not to be on this night and at that we called it a day. days of exploring in the San Juans, I decided to spend the last day of our fall color trip exploring the western half of Kebler Pass. Since the colors were so vibrant, I didn't want to miss out on maximizing the opportunities for this trip. Now, four years ago, we had missed doing any of the side roads on Kebler Pass, so the most important stop this time was the trip up to Lost Lake. The drive-in was pretty spectacular. up here at Lost Lake off the Kebler Pass Road. This is the first time I've been back in here and as you can see behind me it is a beautiful spot. With the mountain peaks back there behind me, the aspens in full blaze and at least for now there's a calm waters on the lake so we have a beautiful reflection. When we first got here the sun was out and was lighting up those those aspens back there on the hillside. The clouds have kind of rolled in right now. I did grab some shots before, but I'm going to wait until maybe the sun comes back out. We're going to get something to eat up at the picnic table up here and hope we can get some uh, sunlight back on these aspens back here to really make this just a brilliant shot. But that's a beautiful spot. I'm glad we came back here today. All right, this is the scene I'm looking at here and as you can tell, it's still mostly cloudy right now, although it appears there's some sunlight shining on the very top of those peaks over there. But this is my composition that I'm working with. And <clears throat> the sun did peek out of the clouds here a little bit ago. And so we got some sunlight on those aspens on the hillside there. And I squeezed off a few shots while it was out. Well, let's look at the composition on the back of my camera here and kind of talk you through it. So. I've zoomed in a little bit to probably about 30 millimeters on my 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And you can see my settings there. I have it set at F16. And I'm gonna flip my ISO auto off so it stays on ISO 100. And you can see on my histogram there that it's pushed a little bit to the right. So what I'm gonna do is dial in some exposure compensation to save some detail in those highlights. And that's gonna darken in those clouds at the top so that they're not so burned out. 
And it looks like about minus two thirds of a stop is gonna do the job there to hold the detail in those clouds above the peaks. They don't have a lot of texture to them. As, and probably on the Osmo here, it's kind of just blowing them out. But that is the shot. And we have the mountain peaks above, a little bit of the clouds there. And I guess I touched my screen and it took a picture. <laughs> so let's bring that back up. Mountain peaks above there. With the reflection, I have the horizon line right in the middle, which is not normally what you want to do. But when you have reflections, it can work in your favor to do that. And the reflection down below. Now I'm probably going to have to like merge together different exposures or process this as an HDR to keep the clouds from blowing out in the top here and have detail in the reflection on the hillsides that I want. But <clears throat> it's a beautiful, beautiful spot here, especially if the sun comes out and hits those aspens really hard again and turns them that bright yellow that we can get. So as I said, the sun was out a little bit ago and I grabbed some shots. And if it comes out again, I will get some more. And if the shot is any good, this is the shot. Change my position here just a little bit, but as you can see the sun is popping out there behind me. We get some a little bit of light on those aspens, so I'm gonna squeeze off a few shots here. Got that dappled light that is so nice. We still have the nice reflection. Checking my exposure here. Need to go just a little darker to hold that sky. Now you can see the sunlight on the hillside there behind me, I think. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Finishing up at Lost Lake, I got back in the Xterra and headed up to the Horse Ranch Park area with its massive aspen groves and beautiful views of the Ruby Range across the valley to try and capture a photo I had missed on four years before. Now I am in an area called Horse Ranch Park up on Kebler Pass. And this area really shows you just what makes Kebler Pass so special, especially in the autumn. Um, you can see that mountainside behind me, full of various colors of trees, some still green, some yellow, some red. There's a lot of diversity and just color everywhere on Kebler Pass. Around every corner you turn is another great shot. And you can see as I turn behind me, I mean, just watch the scene as it goes by. As I turn, you know, there's this 
beautiful grove of aspens behind me where I'm set up. Um, there's beautiful groves of aspen down the road and mountain peaks back there. I mean, especially with the snow on the peaks right now, it just makes all this even better. But uh, this hillside back here is what I'm trying to shoot right now with all that. And what I've done is I've set up my camera over here with my 70 to 200 lens, and I'm gonna try and get a pano of, of that hillside. I'm using my 70 to 200 because I'm shooting it from across the road. And so, as you can probably see down there behind me, there's a bunch of cars and people driving by on the road. And I want to eliminate all that and get above it, but I still want to get the full breadth of that hillside. So the 70 to 200 will zoom it in enough that I can eliminate all that detritus on the bottom, but I'll shoot a pano to get the entire hillside. And right now I'm waiting for the sunlight to come back out again to really light up those trees and make them shine in the brilliant way that they do when, when the sunlight is hitting them right now. And of course, you've got the clouds rolling over the top of those mountains back there, adding interest that way as well. So it's a beautiful scene and I'm, I'm just waiting for the sun to come back out and we'll get it. back in the Xterra, but as you can see out there, the sun finally came back out. I only had to wait like half an hour. So, you know, the patience of being a landscape photographer. But I got the drone out, filmed some video with the drone while I was waiting, and I did get my pano and a few tighter shots of some of the different patches up there as well. So it's time to reverse course and head back to the west on Kebler Pass and See what else we can see on the way home. But what a trip this has been. A big part of what makes traveling on Kepler Pass so amazing in the fall season is the aspen groves that just go on and on and on with some of the tallest aspen trees you've ever seen. I'm going to let this breathe here for a little bit and let you enjoy the experience of traveling through all of this.
uh, here making one of my last stops. This is where the road goes into Lost Lake, turns off the main Kevlar Pass. But I'm just gonna flip this around and really show you guys the view from here because there's color everywhere. I got my camera out when I first got back here to grab the shots because I didn't want to miss the sunlight, but uh, we'll just do a look around, show you guys this view. Exceptionally nice, huh? Especially with the snow on these peaks, just beautiful. Time to begin the long journey home up and over McClure Pass to Glenwood Springs and then I-70, which will hopefully be not too unpleasant on a Monday evening. It's been a fun couple days out here in southwestern Colorado chasing the fall colors. It's been amazingly beautiful and definitely worth the long drive out here. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.